Right then, welcome back to the show, House and Versus. And last week we dropped it, and then it seemed like every pundit decided that they wanted to get involved, especially Tim Sherwood. And Tim Sherwood's bumping his gums out there on Sky, uh, saying, is Matthias De Ligt any better than Harry Maguire? Which I'm going to pose to you that if you have to ask that question, you probably shouldn't be talking about football for a living. And it might also explain why you're no longer coaching for a living. I, I, I find it unfathomable that one, that Tim Sherwood was allowed to say this on air, but two, that it was also unchallenged where he said, Matthias De Ligt has lost his way. Were Bayern Munich fans creating petitions about players who have lost their way? Or were Bayern Munich fans absolutely delighted that he went? This is the exact same as what we talked about last week where everyone was like, he was on the bench, he was this, that, and the other. People just make shit up. And we already said, watch out for people trying to inflate the prices, and that has happened already. Tim Sherwood, we keep an eye on you. I, we, we had, listen, we had Arsenal Fan TV giving us... Um, still delivering the, uh, the culture, if you like, despite the fact that Arsenal are actually winning. Uh, they still find a way to find the melons, don't they? Uh, and this was a really interesting clip that I sort of did the rounds this week. And I'm not even oh, talking about interesting Arsenal clips. And I know it's from a documentary that's been out there a couple of years now. But honestly, is there anything more cringy than Arteta's light bulb thing? I want to see a team that is connected with each other and that shines. Genuinely, can you imagine I plug in a light bulb during the Paddock team talk this weekend and be like, lads, guys, listen, they'll fucking leave. Can you actually imagine in any profession someone pulling out the full 10 out of 10 David Brent treatment like that? <sighs> anyway, so Arsenal Fan TV still delivering the laughs and the, the wibble, um, despite Arsenal doing well. And Robbie, I think he forgot his role here. As the guy that's asking the fans the question, that is the whole idea of, of fan cams outside the ground. You're supposed to let someone say what they're trying to say and not completely shout them down and tell him he's wrong with his opinion. Especially when his opinion is a, a pretty valid opinion to hold. Now, the opinion that this lad had to hold, yeah, play, play the tape, play the tape. For me, apart from Pep Guardiola, the best manager in this league is yes. Mikel Arteta. Yes. So who else do I go and get? No, 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 no. Apart from Pep Guardiola, the next best manager is Una Emre. No, you're just no, no, rubbish. No, 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 rubbish. No, no, no. Listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. there's hold only on. one manager, right, what? there's only one... What the fuck, right. Mikel Arteta win over Una Emre? Listen, Emre. listen, let me tell you. No, man, come you, on. You, you, you look at football. What did, what did Arteta you look at football win? In a, you look at football in no, a no, different... No. Listen, let me finish. Oh my God. We're talking about the Premier League at the moment. Give me the details, man. Una Emre was look there, what did he win? Look at Aston Villa, look what he did with Aston Villa. Una Emre was there, what did he win? Una Emre was there, come on, man, What did Mikel Arteta win? What did Mikel Arteta win? Una Emre was here. So as you can see, the lad's saying, you know, there is a case to be made that Emery might be a better manager than Arteta. And if you go on it by the best managers are the managers who finish in order in the table, then, well, yeah, I guess it's Arteta who's the second best manager in the league. But there has to be a layer of context added to this because not too long ago, Ancelotti was in this league and he finished about seven places behind Frank Lampard. And is anyone prepared to have the argument with me that Ancelotti's a worse manager than Frank Lampard? Because if you are, well, you'd probably go on Arsenal Fan TV this weekend, I reckon. Now, that, that brought up all the usual arguments of people wanting to see what Ten Hag's had and what, uh, what Arteta's had and this, that and the other. And there was an Arsenal fan that decided to say that the Cups that United had won, Arsenal could have won them, but for who they drew in the Cups. Now, obviously, in the last two years, United have won two trophies and uh, there was a, a little gooner. If you go and find that tweet, actually, what he replies to, of course it does, right? There is no sentence in my tweet that he's replied to, which of course it does would make sense in reply to. But we'll ignore that and just get to the meat of what he's saying here. Um, Arteta hasn't won for call. He's also going toe to toe with the best manager in the world where he's won for call. Uh, majority of cup exits have come to big teams. If we had United's run the last two years, we would have won them as well. Now, who did they lose to in last year's FA Cup? I hear you ask. Uh, that would be Liverpool. United knocked out, if you remember. Hmm. So that's a load of old cake, for starters. And then who did they have in the EFL Cup? Brighton, who were put out by Charlton, who we put out. 
cup competitions are whittled down to a pair of teams, which you've not been a part of for many a year, who duke it out for the trophy. And that's how cup work. I don't understand the argument of if we'd have had the... You was in the fucking cup, lads. You didn't lose to the winner. You lost. The same cups that United were in, you chose not to participate in properly. It's not our fault. Winners win. Losers come second and think that was, that's fucking fantastic. I don't remember Oli or Jose Mourinho getting the same sort of treatment for coming second the way Arteta has come in. And now you can argue as much as you like that, oh yeah, he's, he's pretty close in terms of second. Second is fucking second, okay? There's no fucking asterisks like you came second and it was a little bit close or you came second and it was a bit far away. Second is fucking second! Next slide, please. Right then, I don't know who this fucking helmet is, but this did the rounds this week with Flex uh, on TalkSport. Now, for starters, Flex, you walk into there, you know what you're up against, and I'm just doing the same thing as well. Going into the Lions' den there, you're going to be dealt with an absolute tidal wave of fucking wibble. That's their MO. I almost feel sorry for you because they're bringing you on to use you as the lightning rod for all the dog shit that they want to talk about Manchester United. Talk sport, wake up and go, right, what can we pin on United today? So some of the quotes that came out of this, um, th th for starters, the, the number one way that you know you're talking to an utter fuckwit is the, what's United's style of play? What's they go on they a resume. Do count. They go on a what's CV. Man United's style Especially of play? the FA Cup, Flex. right? Before it was a Carabao Cup, we're what's, saying, what's your, style really of play? what's your style of play? Pardon? What's Man United's style of play on the Well, man, you can clearly see, for, from goal kicks, we want, to, we want to be a possession side. We want to build up. We want to dominate teams. It's high transition. It's penning teams in, and it's vacating the midfield to suffocate teams and keep them in. Something that really, really worked for him at Ajax. Doesn't matter what United's style of play is. What, what's Pep's style of play? What, what is anybody's style of play? What is a style of play? Words. What the fuck do they mean, mate? Like, what the fuck does that actually mean? And I, I don't understand how that is any level of criticism. What is his style of play? Picking up a fucking trophy at the end of every fucking season. That's his style of fucking play, mate. Now, United actually are beginning to put in a real nice, very identical style of play. Do you want me to come up with a fucking mad name for it? It's an Haga ball, right? Or some shit like that. So you can actually give it a name so you can pretend that you know what the fuck you're talking about. Manchester United are building up either a 3-2 or a 3-1-6 formation, which is then looking to try and press in a 4-4-2 when the opposition have the ball and try and be very aggressive on transition. There's rotations going on in triangles in the wide areas and in, in, in the inside half spaces. It doesn't have a name yet, mate. But that's what's going on. You saying, what's United style of play? Gives you any sort of fucking credibility in it. Like, do you feel smart now? You can't identify what's going on in the pitch. So you go, well, well what is that style of play? Because I don't, it isn't, it isn't Gagan pressing, which I've read once. It isn't Tikka Taka, which actually was a, a diss on very fast paced possession football. Because you don't know, it's not low blocking. It's not one of them three things that I've heard of in the last 10 fucking years then. What is it? Clueless. Absolutely fucking clueless. And then he goes, Arteta continues to improve Arsenal. Ten Hag is not taking United forward. It's, I still don't think he's the right manager for Manchester United, but I agree. At that point, he's won you another trophy. Two trophies in two seasons. You can't really sack him at that point. Giving him an extension was weird. When you come eighth, Abby, and you stick the place down the Premier League, you can and, still sack him. Okay, Absolutely but but, but giving him the, the extra bit of time was a little was a little bit odd. You didn't say sack Arteta when he finished safe twice, did you? <laughs> How on earth? Or you was he an outstanding care? coach then? He was probably no, an, he was football. probably because he won an you FA Cup flexed. and he was such you an are, outstanding coach. You probably said back to back eighth is fine. You are That's probably what you said. You've had a bad hour and forty five minutes on the show. That's probably Mikel what you said. Hold on, you're telling me someone else can finish eighth. So you're telling me someone else can finish eighth twice. Not doing that. And actually, the sample size. This is based on what? Based on where we came in the league last year. All right. Yeah, that's one metric. The other metric is the entire team was decimated by complete and utter fucking injuries and we still won a trophy that Arsenal did not win. What is football about? Is it this big financial game where you can try and get in as much money as possible? Well done on making sales and you win the game because you got the most money in? Or is it making fucking memories and winning fucking trophies? Because I think I know what I'd rather do. Yay, we came fourth. Get in. I don't give a shit. Winning trophies is what football exists to do. And guess what? The last two years, Manchester United won back-to-back -back trophies. That's a fact. When you look at the 
the way United played in the Charity Shield, you can't tell me that United look like they've gone backwards. So if he's not taking us forwards, and he isn't taking us backwards, what is he doing? What is he doing? The, the, the idea that you can just start dragging United straight off the bat, right away at the start of the season, for what fucking reason? Because we make news. They're going on saying, still sounds like he's the director of football. Masrawi played under him. Dalit played under him. Okay, yes, they did. Uh, did you have a, an extra point on that? Or are you just fucking reeling off things that happened? This is that I, I said. At, uh, at Palace, ironically, Why is he at 4-0, right I thought it was untenable. But actually, with the changes that have been made and the emphasis that's been taken away from Eric Ten Hag to actually allow him to just coach and not get involved. Jim, Jim Ratcliffe literally just said... In an interview, he said he was trying to basically really? fix fix the roof, plus fix the team as well. Mm. It's not. It still mm. sounds like he's director of football. Masrawi well, will play the plays under yeah. him. The Lick will play the plays under him. Where's that's Lenny worth. Lenny Oro. You pay fifty million pounds oh, for an eighteen year old. You pay fifty just million pounds for an eighteen year old yeah, instead of seventy million for a twenty one year old. You pay fifty one good million in pounds for an eighteen year old who's injured right now. Yeah. That's still but old man. Uh, is Masrawi playing under him? And him knowing that he's actually a really good fucking player, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Where was all this criticism when Arsene Wenger was just signing every fucking teenager in France? Because he had the in there. Ten Hag knows the system that he wants to play and he knows the players that he wants to bring in to play it. What's the issue with that? I, he paid 50 million for an 18 year old who's injured right now. On what relevance? Did Ten Hag get him with a fucking cricket bat, mate? What the fuck relevance does that have to do? Yes, we signed an 18-year-old. Now he's injured. Yeah, sack him. Fucking hell. Did this make sense as it left your fucking mouth? I fucking hate talks, but a lot of them can fuck off. So Jamie Carragher has got United finishing behind Tottenham. Much in the same way that I guess I've got Liverpool finishing fucking eighth this season. Uh, he's got Arna Slot as the manager to watch. Don't worry, mate. We are going to watch him. We're absolutely going to watch him, but... On what evidence do you... So what you're saying to me here is that with no signings, Arna Slot's going to take Liverpool forward and have them finishing, what, in a position to challenge Arsenal and City? Is that what you're saying? If he's the manager to watch and otherwise he's just going to do the exact same Klopp did last year, does that mean that he's just as good as Jurgen Klopp? Because mm, not fucking much evidence of that so far, is there? Let's be honest. Zero signings, all your big players potentially looking to leave. Either... What you're saying is Jurgen Klopp's a myth, or this guy's like as good as Jurgen Klopp. And he might deliver you like what, one title in 30 years? <laughs> I, I can see United finish inside the top four. We're gonna need to have a far better injury record than we had last season. But I can see United finishing in the top four. Liverpool though, with the weaknesses that Klopp's particular style of system sort of exposed a little bit last season, or covered up for some of the deficiencies that we've we seen Trent Alexander-Arnold. Unless Arna Slot's just going to do the exact same thing or try to do the exact same thing that we saw with Jurgen Klopp, I don't know how it's going to work for him. Anyway, please tag me in all the wibble that you're definitely going to see over the next few days because there's going to be loads. And I'll see you in the next one. Laters.